In this video, we're going to see an introduction to kangaroo physics. We're going to see how it works. And then we're going to create an interesting output and animate it just like this. What's going on, fellas? I'm Geo and this is Geo Creations. Let's jump right into the video. Here we are in Rhino. Now let's open Grasshopper. Let's turn on bifocals. Let's see what are the tool sets we got inside Kangaroo Physics. So you don't have to install it separately. It comes with it, on the, at least on the latest versions. So here is Kangaroo 2. And these are the tools we got. So usually what Kangaroo Physics does is it would simulate and, you know, it will give you an animation of uh, how the object reacts to certain inputs. For example, load, wind, pressure, elasticity, etc. So today we'll be dealing just with elasticity for the most part. This is going to be an introductory tutorial, so you don't have to worry about having no knowledge about this tool. We can explore more advanced stuff as we move further. Right, let's get started. Let me put it aside. Let's create like a rectangular surface as a sample material. So we're going to create a fabric, right? And then we're going to give certain inputs to the fabric like elasticity and then we'll see how it would react to multiple factors like wind load etc first and foremost um let's create the initial surface that we're going to try and do i'm going to create a point to make sure our stuff is a bit further than um, like further from the origin so let me create a rectangle so this is like a rectangular fabric. And by the way, Kangaroo Physics completely works with meshes. And uh, the stuff we're going to do are going to be nerves from the beginning and we're going to convert them into meshes a bit later. Yeah, so let me turn it into a surface. There you go, so this rectangle is a surface. Now we're going to con convert this surface to a mesh. There are different methods to do this, but I usually do this do it this way. Mesh surface, yeah. You can directly control like control it with, you know, this like this. Control M to reveal the meshes. Uh it's supposed to be try uh you know the curves, then surface and then mesh surface but it automatically takes it so it's fine so we'll hide this stuff let's zoom in here so now u and v count so let's say 10 on u and 10 on v uh, more count more fluidic like more um smooth the motion would be when you animate the kangaroo physics uh, object um, but uh, if you wa don't want to break your PC, I would recommend to keep it minimal. But anyway, that's fine. Um, I guess 10 is more bad. Fine. So, uh, we created our base surface. Now let's set up the Kangaroo Physics tool. So first, let's experiment with Bouncy Solver. And finally, we can create an animation um, with a different type of solver. But for now, yeah, we can use Bounce Solver to uh, get a real-time reaction to it. So yeah, goal objects is where all stuff goes, like all of the input parameters goes into goal objects. So I'm going to use a merge component to, you know, make it more... Um, organized so whatever we have would go to merge a uh, component and then it'll go straight to goal objects so we don't have to worry about it too much a button to reset you know if you do, if you mess things up we can reset the stuff using this button um, to activate the solver I'm gonna use a boolean toggle a true or false toggle so if it's false it's turned off. If it's on, it'll be, you know, true. And finally, um, we're going to give a mesh in here. And the output would be a mixture of mesh, 
and um, uh, you know the wireframes, uh, mesh cur curves, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, we would probably would need a just mesh. We can use a list item separated. Let me show you what I'm gonna do with that. So first things first, we have to input our uh, you know initial object, our subject into um, Kangaroo. But as I said, everything goes in goal objects. But if you go straight with it, it would show an error. That means whatever that goes to goal object should go through a kangaroo physics object, a kangaroo physics component, okay? So here we have something called show, and it takes the geometry here and gives out a geometry as the output. So this is what translates your geometry to something of uh, what kangaroo uh, physics can locate and read. So I'm just going to put it here. So now we can see the output has all the um, like the mesh edges and uh, edges and vertices. Um, we probably would just need the mesh. So I'm just going to yeah, let's hide this. Double click, hide, and probably uh, hide all this stuff as well. And list item to just take out the mesh part. So now we just got the clean uh, mesh. So basically, list item like list down everything you have. The first item would be the mesh. Most probably, yeah. Just have one item. That's fair. Interesting, but yeah. Anyway, oh there we go. So we got the vertices in here. Fair. So we just need uh, the list item. So anyway, it's just the mesh. Sometimes it takes in um, you know multiple objects uh, in some cases, but we need to, we just need this mesh so we can take it from here. Uh, my middle mouse is not working properly. That's weird. Anyway. Right, so we have successfully set up um, Kangaroo for, you know, running. Now we are going to give them uh, enough conditions for it to operate properly. So right now we haven't given any set of rules or conditions. Um, let's say, let's start with maybe elasticity, right? So we're not going to deal with um, more complex stuff. We're going to stick with one or two functions and um, maybe further down the line, if you want to, you know, know more, if you want to learn from me, uh, especially, um, you can leave down a comment below. Um, yeah, that would help the algorithm as well. And, uh, depending on that, um, I can shape my content further down the line, but if you're not interested, yeah, you can, <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. At least leave a like, um, yeah, there you go. So, uh, this is edge length that's basically um you know it's like you know, the edge length is basically elasticity here so we will take this mesh here and length factor is basically like you know how much reduction in length are you aiming for if you take an elastic if you stretch it to a full extent that means one um if you read if you leave it a little bit and if it goes down right so that means like let's if, if it goes to sort of half the size that means 0.5 so let's say it's reduced to half the size so edge length is um you know it's going to give you elasticity to all these edges and uh, it's going to pull this to half the way here so that would uh, you know, give you some sort of elastic feel and if i just yeah connect it here and then convert it, yeah, basically now you can see there's an error because um, there must be something more going on. Yes, exactly. This is what I was talking about. So mesh and then we got the lines and everything. So we can use list item instead. Cool, that's uh, perfect, yeah. 
Cool. So now uh, we have given um, the factor, the parameter. Now we just have to activate this. So double click here. And now you can see it, it is activated and it tripled down uh, because, you know, there's nothing to hold it together, right? So there's nothing to hold it together. So it just crippled, it would you know, cripple down. So I just reset it. And then I changed the elasticity factor to one, which means there is no elasticity, which means uh, the full size. Uh, 0 0.9, a little bit, 8, a little more, 9, like 7. So once you go further, yeah, it'll cripple down <laughs> into some, some like singularity. So it's zero, nothing. So yeah. Now if you try to blow blow wind here, it'll go out um, infinitely. Uh, if you don't try, I can. Let me see where's wind. I can type wind here. Yeah, we can try out wind, maybe. So let's type wind. Here's the mesh. And for the wind vector, um, let's give maybe Z. So if I give Z vector, it could fly up infinitely forever. So if I just give Z vector and then give it here, it's going to fly up like that forever and it's not going to come back. So yeah, that's something funny. And um, yeah, you can set up your you know own vector and control it, but we're not going to get confused right now. Let's delete it. It's fine. Right, so uh, now we have elasticity. Let's bring this back. Yeah. So now it's like a piece of cloth uh, with nothing to hold to. So let's try hold it. Um, you know, put it together in all four corners. Let's uh, maybe you know, we're gonna put it like that. Reset it. Let's you know hold this fabric in all four corners. So I'm just gonna use um, mesh corners, which could be found uh, here. Mesh corners. Mesh. And then uh, we need anchor. That is the parameter that would hold it down. But these corners are just the points that we have selected. And by the way, you cannot just put random uh, points and hope it would work. Uh, this point should uh, be taken from the mesh. So it ha it should have the same uh, you know, coordinates as um, one of the points in the mesh. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So it's advisable to take um, these use these kind of components to point pinpoint what kind of points you are going to use. Okay. So here's point over here, and then if I drag it here, it'll work. And then if you yeah, now you can see it's holding the fabric in all the four sides. Yeah. Now, let's say I want to move this up and down. So what I can do is I can extract this point from mm -hmm. the corners, right click here, internalize this data. So now these four points are basically separated from here. And then I'm going to set this as target. So now these color points are going to be um, attracted uh, to this one because that's what we set the target as. Now we can move with here, like, you know, anywhere. Right, so you can literally control this. If you want to reset this, probably you can do this like that, yeah. Cool, so, oopsie. Now we know how, um, you know, kangaroo physics work to a good extent. Now let's create something um, with this, let's say I'm going to create like a fabric tent, like a shed or a pavilion with this. Okay. Let's, uh, you know, let's not delete any of these. Let's just build on top of it. Maybe uh, I'm going to make it somewhat rectangular. So I'm going to add a new, um, rectangular plane, probably, yeah, something like that. Um, pro yeah, let's keep it like that and, um, we can change it whenever necessary. It's fine. Okay, now I'm going to move this rectangle 
somewhere mm-hmm. in the dead axis. So um, move this rectangle to in the dead axis, maybe like three meters. There you go. Perfect. Cool. Now um, let's construct some sort of structure. Um, let's say uh, my points are from here and it's going to converge at the top like that. So what I'm going to do is just, you know, make it more uh, pleasing to look at and realistic, let's say. So first I'm going to make a point in here and then I'm going to move this point up here. Move. Uh, let's move this another three meters, maybe. Uh, or we can, yeah, we can just use this. Yeah, it's gone there. And uh, let's use these points. Um, where are these points? Wait. Let's maybe use these points and put it down here, like flat, like the, let, let's make it lay. Um, let's make it flat by using project project so yeah there you go and uh, now I'm just going to scale it scale this geometry from the center here right so with um, probably this as the center or take an average of this average of this so here's the center point and the factor let's say 2.6 for now yeah that's too much let's reduce it now let's you know join like a line through this point and see how it uh, looks so first I want to uh, you know Enjoy line, join the line from here to here. So let's hide this bit. Uh, let's hide this for now. These two at least. Let's join a line from here to maybe here. Okay. Not bad. Uh, but I would uh, you know really like it to be joining here. Um, so I've got an idea, probably we can um, use SDL instead of this. So uh, instead of taking um, this whole thing, we can take uh, this for first, yeah? And then maybe why not, like, add another point? I guess that, that would solve the issue, right? Um, let's make this and, uh, yeah, let's... Not bad. Yeah, that's that's all the issue. That's um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's increase the scale of, or decrease the scale. Something. Yeah, that's fine. That seems alright. And uh, we can add a line here as well, just for extra support, or or maybe a pole in the middle, right? So we can add another line. from here that is basically here right so we can take a relay from here and uh, yeah straight to the ground so we have, we have something here right so yeah we can take that cool so that could be like a structural thing okay let's uh, not get confused with all this stuff let's organize it a little bit I'm just going to put this here, put this here, so these are all part of uh, the structural, you know, a aesthetic build, <laughs> I mean it's not going to affect uh, any of the kangaroo physics stuff, but it's purely uh, to make it more believable, right? So this is just for the structure. I'm just calling it structure. 
we're going to put this uh, inside a group uh, just to differentiate uh, between this and this, you know, don't get confused with um, the kangaroo physics stuff. So this has nothing to do with kangaroo physics. We can use this later on whenever it's necessary, but for now, let's keep it like this, maybe somewhere safe. Um, yeah, these are the three lines we need. Uh, the rest of the stuff could go, and you don't you don't need this rectangle as well, right? So I can hide uh, this. Perfect. Right. So now, um, as we can see, like you know, there's something going just straight down here, and uh, I would like to you know make use of it. And um, you know, probably take this particular bit and then pull it on top here. So let's try doing that. First, um, we need to set a point here, right? So probably we can use um, the center point itself. So um, if you use a set, you know, if you use area, we already have a center point. Oh, anyway, area. That's actually literally here, but anyway, it's fine. Uh, area. So we got like a point here. So now this point would definitely work, but if, um, you know, because like if there's an intersection and uh, this uh, is literally on one of the, one of the mesh, mesh vertices, if it was not, then it wouldn't work actually. So now it would work. Let's take an anchor. So this is the point. And the target would be literally this point over here wait uh so sorry uh that would be literally this point over here yes let's bring this a bit here i keep getting confusing yeah so this would be the target right and we would be connecting it here so now it's working so basically we took this point from here and there we're putting it, uh, took this point, took this point and uh, fed it as a target. Okay. Right. Now, you can see it's working and this is what we kind of wanted. And uh, I can probably change this a little bit. How long would we want? That's why. And um, still, we can, you know, uh, increase the number of count to make it a little bit uh, more smoother. I was like 10, I can increase it, uh, increase the limit to like 15, let's say. And uh, for example, if I just reduce, increase it to 11, it detaches because now apparently the center is not part of this vertices, uh, one of this vertices, so it would get detached. So to avoid this mistake, we can use um, a point closest. Uh, sorry, yeah, the closest point component. So it would uh, select uh, what the closest point to the center, basically. So um, closest point uh, with um, da, 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 yeah, um, this camera physics, yeah, closest points with naked vertices. So in this case, we're not going to take the naked vertices. We're going to take the uh, in like clothed points, which is naked vertices are the points that are outside the mesh, and clothed points are points that are inside. We're going to take it, uh, you know, the clothed points as the cloud, and this point as the point that is attracting. So the closest point is basically here. And we're going to take this point as the anchor point. So now it's working. It takes the closest point and it'll make it work. So now you don't have to worry about it being an odd number or an even number. So if it's an odd number, it wouldn't work. If it's an even number, it would work without um, closest point. But anyway, uh, we're just going to stick with that, let's say. As Perfect. Uh, if I, I, I feel like reducing the height would be a little more um, uh, 
uh, suitable for this one. So I'm going to reduce it to somewhere like that. That's fine. Cool. Perfect. So I think um, the kangaroo part, uh, you know, could be, you know, uh, done from here. I mean, um, and, uh, you know, we can uh, literally make it look more pretty by using something like multi-pipe maybe. So first I'm just going to uh, give all these um, lines a uh, thickness. So I'm just going to merge these lines. So data one, data two, and data three. Yeah. And then if I created a multi-pipe with it, so it'll look like that. Perfect. I'm going to reduce the size of it. Point zero five. Let's try. Okay, not bad. I can, you know, play a little more with the structure, structure size. I think it's fine. We don't have to worry about it right now. It's good. We have a nice join going on. That's fine. Yeah. So now uh, let's give it a preview, maybe. Let's uh, hide this and hide all this stuff. Okay, let's give this a preview. Custom preview. Yeah, there we go. And uh, now the structure part is pretty much done. And then, um, yeah, what else we can do? Let's say, uh, 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 yeah, we can add uh, some sort of structure here. So we can take this mesh and again, uh, you know, separate the edges. So mesh edges. And then I'm going to create some like a uh, uh, multi pipe here. So here as well, multi pipe. Uh, you can do it for both naked and the outside interior. Okay, similar same, like similarly, point zero two five maybe. Let's say that size. Uh, maybe you're less than that. Uh, structure size, half of it. There you go. Let's create a material for this. Some preview. I'm going to give it a color. It's in Colors Forge. Maybe something like that. Let's go to rendered view. Let's see how it looks. Let's hide this one. Not bad. Let's make it a bit more interesting. Probably we can add some sort of geometry that could go with it. Um, let's say, go to shaded. We're going to see how to animate this um, by the end of the tutorial. But yeah, let's um, keep having fun a little bit there. I feel like this is a bit unproportional. Well, not proportional, but anyway, it's fine. Um, yeah, let's try making a surface from uh, Rhino. Make a shape. And uh, what kind of shape can we do? Um, let's say, let me create like a, um, I can just normal rectangle. And I'm going to use like a curve two point arc like here one and two and three this could be done in grasshopper so but 
I just can't be asked, but it's fine. Uh, let's push these curves a bit up. There we go. And we can create something interesting out of it. I reckon. So we can probably select these three and maybe use patch here. Patch. Hit OK. Yeah, that's an interesting shape, I guess. And now I'm just going to mirror this using this as the axis. Perfect. So I'm going to use this um, to, you know, wrap around these tiny boxes. Um, yeah, let's bring this here. I'm going to set this as multiple B-reps. Set multiple B-reps. Fair enough. I'm going to go to a different layer and then hide this one. You're not going to need that. This is a technique that's common in almost all our uh, tutorial series, um, if you notice. But yeah, uh, we're going to use the box mark for game here. So this is going to be a bit different in this case. So uh, here we have a set of uh, meshes and we're going to convert this meshes to poly surfaces but a disclaimer this is a part of uh, this plugin called pufferfish so mesh to poly surface um, would convert this mesh quads to poly surface but i would need a plugin called pufferfish it's not um, that hard to get it is free to install um you can just find it in food for rhino and then yeah this would convert the meshes into tiny little b -rubs. So now it's just one open b -rub. We have to use the construct b -rub to split it up into multiple parts. So now we can see, like, it has a lot of surfaces. Now we're going to use the surface to, you know, use box morph here. And, uh, Usually for the surface, we would use isotrim, but it's already trimmed, so you don't need isotrim here. We probably use um, divide domain, but we're not dividing anything, so the U and V count would be like 1 and 1. You can also you know, add a number slider 1, but I just did it uh, with double slash 1, which should give a panel with 1. Yeah. So um, here's the faces. And we can use surface box here with this as surface, and you already have a domain. And the height, uh, let's say 0.3 for now. I can um, change it later. And if you notice, there is a data structure um issue here so it's split into one branch so i'm just going to graft it to match it to this domain you can either graft it here or graft it here to match it perfectly and then it'll work as intended it's like point two okay we'll add another decimal point yeah that's fine Now let's bring in box morph. Here we have our geometry here. And as it is, um, you know, a perpendicular to the plane, we don't need to add a separate reference. We can add the same B rep as reference. And the target would be the twisted box here. And it will work, but um, bear in mind, like it won't work um, pretty smooth if it's uh, a B rep. So I would recommend converting this into a mesh, the B rep mesh. I mean, it is working fast, uh, but it would work a bit faster if we convert this to a B rep. Um, I mean, sorry, a mesh. Okay, that's not bad. As it is, it's fine. So yeah, let's give this as target and let's see how it looks. Yeah, perfect. It's fine. Control M to hide the meshes.
Well, that's something. We can to add a bit more uh, to it. We can probably add uh, like a vertex load, like a perpendicular load in here, maybe with kangaroo. Let's just try adding a unary load. Smaller load. And the point could be from these points. Clothed points. So these are all points from the meshes. First vector, let's say Z, but in negative direction, that's downwards. Um, da like Z, but a negative Z. The negative offset. Weight, let's say 0.5. Let's see how it how it works. And I'm going to put it like here. Okay, perfect. Let's reduce the weight. I'm going to add another decimal value. Make it smoother. Not bad. Yeah, that's something. Okay. Yeah. So that's some um, like in, like an interesting shape. Yeah. Cool. Now I'm just going to turn on the stuff that uh, we disabled. And uh, this as well. There we go. And finally, yeah, we can give a preview to this. Uh, we can probably change the direction of it. It's going like upwards. Uh, we can probably make it negative in here height add a negative to this height let's see so yeah now it's going downwards perfect I was more like it all right perfect uh let's give them some like uh fabric as uh texture and add a texture separately but yeah it's fine Material, maybe another color, like a gray-ish color, a bit of transparency, maybe. Yeah, that's perfect. Let's see how it looks in rendered view. I'm going to turn on uh, uh, shadows, maybe. Da -da 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 -da. Ground plane. Yeah. Perfect. Well, yeah, that's kind of the final output. Um, but um, let's say I want to animate this, right? So, yeah, I'm going to turn it false. Perfect. So, yeah, let's consider this as the final output, okay? But what if I want to animate uh, this and see, you know, how uh, it could react uh, to a certain, uh, you know, parameter? So, let's say... Um, Let's see what let's decide what to animate. First, um I'm just going to yeah, hide uh, like disable this again. To determine like let's um let's test out different stuff. Let's disable it. Enable this maybe. Yeah. Right, so first uh let's try elasticity and let's see if it's a good thing to animate. So yeah, start zero. That's one. Uh bad. So it could start from here and it will end in here. So yeah, that's nice. Starting here and ending maybe here, something like this. Let's go a bit further, let's see how it is. Uh let's reduce the load a little tiny bit. One five. It's just a load of load. Fine. So uh, I guess this could be a good animation. We can start stop it with like eight, like point eight here. Add another decimal value just in case. 
So you could start from here and, you know, end like this. I feel like this is a good, uh, you know, motion to animate. Yeah, we can just stick with this. Um, we can obviously add multiple parameters, but at the moment we we just stick with one. Yep, this is the one we're going to animate. Perfect. And now I'm just going to replace bounce dissolver with zombie solver. So the difference between bounce dissolver and zombie solver is. Um, bounce solver would give you the real-time animation. Uh, the zombie solver would, you know, cut the animation and give you the results straight away. So I'm going to log this for now. Go all objects. Here's the output. And we don't need button or anything here. I'm just going to... Straight away, it'll give all the output. Let me unlock it. Yeah. So, no um, unwanted stuff. It just clear... Um, you know, final result. But yeah, the the animation would be a bit stiff. Um, but, but like, um, you would know what to get, you know, what to receive um, if you did it like this. Otherwise, you know, it'll jiggle around and it'll be unpredictable. But yeah, it's fine. Uh, we can animate with this. If we got something else, like, uh, we can animate this as well. But I think uh, it's fine to, you know, use that bit. We have uh, another elasticity, right? Like, uh, wait, one sec. And uh, yeah, there's an anchor. But yeah, it's fine. We can um, use this itself. It's fine. Now, what I'm going to do is, let's set a view. Let's say, let's set a proper view. Something like this maybe we can probably add a couple of humans right anyway, um, I'm just going to um, set a view set view maybe name this as animation get ok and uh, probably tweak some render settings maybe make it as a gradient and um yeah i can i reckon like we can add like a human for scale uh, i'm going to lock this to bring in a human i'm going to bring it from 3d warehouse like in low poly human What else would be? Uh, yeah, let's bring this guy. Download. I'm just gonna put a yeah. I can just import this by like you know file import and then uh, yeah, this is there's the guy. Hit open. Hit OK. Obviously, the scale is not right. We can probably reduce this guy's uh, scale. So we can put this guy here. And then uh, we can uh, make this guy smaller. But yeah, this is not the actual scale intended. We can increase it. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we can increase the scale here. Let's go to this bit. Can increase the scale literally from here itself until it doesn't hit the guy. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, that seems all right. Perfect. Yeah, we can keep it like that. And then if we see the animation, yeah, it comes out like that. Fine. Now we are ready to animate. I'm just gonna put it like that somewhere. Perfect. Now let's animate this. Right click here. Animate. Let's set a folder location. Browse. 
Mm. Let me give folder for this. Okay. Name of it could be animation. Oh, uh, kangaroo. We got 80 frame count, so 80 makes sense. Uh, 1920 to 1990, yeah, that's fair. So here's the preview. Yeah, let's go ahead and animate this. Hit OK. And it'll start animating this. I'm going to speed this up and let's come back later once it's done. All right, the animation is done. You can probably use a video editing software to compile the frames that we got. So it literally would look like this. It would give you the frame as individual images. And then you would need a video editing software. It could be anything. I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve. Right, let's set uh, the sequence timeline, maybe like 30 frames per second. Now let's save that. I'm going to go to the Edit tab. So you got 80 frames, so probably worth like 3 seconds. So let's say, yeah. I'm going to select it. And then just drag it and drop it here. Most probably it will already be compiled. And then like, you know, you'll be able to um, see, you know, add uh, audio and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it is already compiled. Like you can see the animation going. Uh, and then probably I would, um, you know, copy this and reverse this clip. Um, change clip speed. Uh, reverse speed, change. Now what happens? It will create like a loop. Yeah. Uh, not the smoothest thing, but it works. So like, let's say... Yep, not bad. Yeah, once it's done, it can literally upload it, like, sorry, yeah, ex um, export it through this tab. Over here, I'm just going to make it H.264. Uh, format would be like MP4. Yeah, I'm going to leave everything as it is. Add to render queue. Yeah, let's set um, location. And here is your final result. Hey, that's pretty much it for today. If you liked what you saw, please do like the video. Comment down below if you have any suggestions. If you want more tutorials like this, yeah, please do let me know. Share this video with someone that would be interested. That's it for today. Catch you guys in the next video. See ya.